I was 18 years old and I had to move from Christchurch. It was very scary. I didn't know a soul. And within a couple of weeks, I was doing live television five days a week. Um, live TV, that's a whole different kettle of fish. And But it was an amazing experience. I think I owe so much to being on that show. I spent five really, truly wonderful years there. And it was a, a family. And yeah, that's where I grew up. I grew up on that show. The best advice I could give to anyone who wants to be a kids presenter is you have to be a dick. And you can't be shy about being a dick on TV. Come on, that's what we're here to do. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was good at being a dick from, a, from the very start. <laughs> I remember when I was younger thinking it would be so wonderful if someone asked me for my autograph. And then when it starts happening all the time, it's not so wonderful. But you know, no, I always had a great reaction. And because you're a kids presenter, people don't tend to be, well, not to my face. And, I've got to think, this is when I was 18, so there was no Twitter, there was no Facebook, you know, people weren't on the internet being cruel. <laughs> um, so I didn't get much flack, and it was really great to see, actually, you know what the coolest thing was? Um, seeing a little kid's eyes just, like, jump out of their head, and they couldn't understand how you got out of the TV. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it was my first experience of film. I just remember seeing the set and thinking it was the most amazing thing ever. Um, then I had a scene, this was hilarious, because this is after Vincent Ward had left and things were still moving along, I guess, but there was a scene where um, Timuera and um, Cliff, <laughs> I suddenly forgot, how could I forget Cliff's name? Uh, Cliff were uh, talking in Māori and they were making it up as they went. So I was like, oh, bro, how about I say this? And then, oh, yeah, yeah, And then, oh, yeah, I'll say this. And I was standing there going, wow, is this how film is made? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but hey, it all came together. So there was a scene where Timuera, Timuera's character and my character were supposed to get it on. And so they cut from, editing is a beautiful thing, they cut from a shot of me doing my slow-mo turn. Like, this is pretty much all I did in the film. Straight to Timuera on top of this girl with her boobies out, bang, bang, bang. So everyone, of course, thought it was me. No, it was a chick from Wardrobe who they said, hey, can anyone be the, you know, who wants to get their titties out? And, and she went, yo, I have a hoon on Tim. And that's how it happened. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> when I first got the script, they did have my character being dragged out into the middle of the village, butt naked. And I said, I'm, I'm terrified, I'm too scared. And my agent was good enough to get me out of that and I was fully clothed. <laughs> I think the good thing for me was that I went away for two years and moved to London. And so coming back and being broke, <laughs> um, I was worried about people just seeing you as a kids presenter. So I was, I was really lucky to get that job on C4. They gave me a shot and, yeah, I owe a lot to C4 as well because people went, oh, yeah, she's not just throwing guns on people and running around like a lunatic. She can do some other stuff. <laughs> I've had this r real luck with finding workplaces that are tight and people really get along. And the same was at C4. And we we're in this tiny little office in TV3. We, we always felt like the poor cousin. You know, we, we'd go off on shoots. It would just be you and, and your camera dude who's doing the sound as well. You know, we really made stuff on a budget. But that's when I think the magic happens a lot of the time, when people have to um, you know, knuckle in together and, and really help each other out. And that's been my experience of presenting. Um, apart from when I was in the UK, it was very different. Um, but here it's like you all just, you know, get in there together and help out. Well, that was another great experience, just, you know, to see how they work. And I got to dress up in all leathers, like this leather one piece, and have, you know, like swords and stuff. Um, and the most ridiculously high heels walking down a hill trying to fire a bow and arrow. So stupid. But um, another, I'm so, it's so good to have shows like that being filmed in New Zealand. You know, we've had Hercules and Xena and Sparty. And I think, you know, it brings so much work to this country. And I really hope those shows continue here. I made a decision that I really wanted to be an actor and I could say it out loud. So I left presenting, I left C4 to go and pursue this. Um, the next year and a half was pretty bad. <laughs> um, baroque, you know, going to auditions, just feeling completely down and out, not getting any work. Or, you know, little things here and there, to be honest. But nothing that, you know, made, solidified it for me. So you have so many times when you're just like, what am I doing and I'm never going to make it and this is, I'm, useless and um, 
Well, I got sent along to an audition for Shorty, and I know the good thing for me was that I actually, I did walk out of it going, I think I've done the best I could do. I felt nice about it, which doesn't happen too often in auditions. So that was a good feeling. She just felt like me, my character, I guess. And yeah, they took me on, woo! <laughs> Shorty Street are renowned for actually casting actors that are a lot like their character. Um, Roy Mata, I think we have a long common. I don't think she's as, she's more serious than me, I think. But I think she's quite a um, affable character, she's kind and nice, which I hope I am. Um, she never, like, she doesn't like to shake the boat, shake the, rock the boat. <laughs> Sorry, rock the boat too much. Um, but she's also, she's, she's strong, stronger probably than I am actually um, in her beliefs and sounding her beliefs. So, you know, there's parts of me in there and there's parts that aren't at all, yeah. You have to, what you hope you can do is go into th these very quickly shot scenes pretty prepared, you know, because they're going to move on whether you felt good about it or not. I mean, of course here you can ask for another take, but we're always up against it. Time restraints are major, so you can... Oh, that was terrible, but they're already going, they're already repoing to the next set, you know? So, yeah, you have to be prepared. There's a lot of dialogue to learn. There's a, a lot of, you know, you're going from a happy scene to a sad crying scene, you know, boom, boom, boom. And then you go to lunch. So, yeah, you've got to know your stuff going into it. I am so lucky because I get to work with George Henry. He's my dad. Um, so, get, you know, he's just. Well, everyone looks up to George and he's such a lovely uh, presence to have around as well. So just to be able to act and look into his eyes and feel safe as heck, you know, having him next to you, um, that's been wonderful for me. There was one scene in particular I remember and it was with my husband, Ben Mitchell, and um, my dad and my mum, Christine Asher, the casting director. Cool family, huh? <laughs> and um, I disown them because my dad's been shady and doing all this, this dodgy stuff behind my back and it was a location scene and we had a bit more time to work on it. And uh, yeah, really felt it inside that one. But it was also the people around me helping me a lot. Um, I think for me, it's just a matter of a camera light switching on or um, walking onto a stage and somehow I can be someone else. <laughs> And that's why I think, you know, I've always considered presenting like acting because you're you, but you're a heightened you. You're performing you. And that's, you know, acting, you're performing as someone else, another character. I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah, something switches.